Welcome to the Growing Your Financial Business, the Woman's Way podcast. I'm Robin Crane, and I was a financial advisor for over a decade. But before that, I was a singer-songwriter. And now, even as a mom of three with a teenager, toddler, and a baby, I run a seven-figure business helping women in financial services grow their businesses and make a bigger impact. In this podcast, I'll bring you financial advisors, industry influencers, and highly successful entrepreneurs to give you innovative strategies designed for women. So get ready to learn how to get in front of the right people, get more ideal clients, and be able to grow your ideal business so you can live your ideal life. Welcome to the Growing Your Financial Business, the Woman's Way podcast. I'm here with Renee Nurse. Did I say that right? Norse. Oh, oh. This is, of course, of course, of course. Norse. Of course, of course. Okay. Okay. So I should have asked you before, Renee Norse. Okay. So let me tell you about Renee and we'll pass it on to her. But Renee has 25 years of experience as a financial advisor herself, which I think is so great to bring to to the listeners, to the community, because you've experienced it and you're still experiencing it. Um, Renee owns her own firm called Urban Wealth Management Group, focusing on helping women and also has four women um, in uh, as advisors, the firm as well. Right? All, all, all women, all women. All women. Not all, not all advisors. Oh, not all Three advisors. of us, yeah. There's three of us. So we have, even though I'm the owner of the firm, the admin person is the boss of everybody. <laughs> and so you better have an admin person with that, right? Yes. That's awesome. Absolutely. So all women right. firm. Um, you have been a guest commentator for CNBC's Closing Bell Report, um, one of 20 award awardees for 2017's Investment News, Women to Watch, a five-star wealth manager awardee since 2014, and in 2018 was recognized by the Los Angeles Business Journal as one of the LA's most influential wealth managers and was named as a marquee who's who awardee in 2019. Renee, there's so much for me. That's a, that's a mouthful for me to say. <laughs> I'm just excited to have you here. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my, my, my yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm very excited. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your background. And I know we talked a little bit ahead about what, what is it that you think is so important for women in the industry? And you said confidence. And yeah. so if you could tell me a little about your journey into this world of financial services and maybe even the lack of confidence and where that started to change for you. Absolutely. And just as um, a backup, I actually was 25 years in the wirehouse. Now it's 33 years. So I've eight years now in my oh, wow. business. Yeah. So I'm very blessed um, in that respect. But to answer your question, though, um, you know, the confidence level, I think, is still a little bit of a challenge for a lot of women. And, you know, not just in business, but typically in life in general. But the things that really made a big difference for me, because I, when I first started, there were people who did not want to work with me. They knew I was a woman when I talked to them on the phone, but when they came into the office and they saw that I was a woman of color, they said, oh, I got an appointment. Sorry, I got to go. You know, so the thing that made the difference for me, because that did put me in tears a few times, is that I had some major um, mentors and advocates. And so with, you know, when your confidence level is down, now that was a different situation, but the confidence level being that, am I really knowledgeable about that? Do I understand this? Am I going down the right path? Am I really doing the right thing for my clients? If you have a mentor, they're going to kind of walk you through and confirm that. But an advocate will stand up for you when you are in an environment and you're getting pushed back by somebody. Now, this happens a lot. For example, being in meetings, um, you know, when I was at a firm, and it's, it's, it's a male-dominated industry, as we know. And I could have, you know, I mentioned an idea and say, oh, yeah, I think we should do this for our office and make some changes they wouldn't listen to it, but if a man said the same thing, and that happened a few times, said exactly the same thing that I did, then everybody said, oh, that's a great idea. So having an advocate for somebody to stand up and say, Renee said that first, or whoever, you need to have somebody who is really going to stand in front and push you and push other people out of the way. Because every, every in our... Morning. DNA, we are amazing. Our thoughts are that we want to help people. We do an excellent job. But if you don't feel like you're getting the right path, um, levels of confidence, and you're, you know, asking yourself, am I doing the right thing? Somebody else will help you get there. So that made the big difference for me. 
Did you have that advocate at the wirehouse? Then you had someone that kind of had your back. Had your back. I did. I did, and I had uh, some wonderful mentors. So um, that really made uh, a big difference. And um, we had a, a group of other women that I was connected with, and they were at two other firms. And we got together on a regular basis to help each other, you know, talk about some of the challenges that we were having um, and what paths and different things that we were doing that we were able to share with each other. And so that also helped. Um, but definitely being in the financial industry, it is male, male dominated. Um, and it's going to take a while for that to slip over. But we are seeing that there are more men who realize that they need to have more women on their team. Women make up over 50% of this country's population. So better do a better job of understanding how to work with women and work for women. Now's a good time. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you think of times where, cause I'm, I'm sure I know it happened with me, but like times where you just wanted to quit and like bring us to the scene of like, I, I want to, cause this is 33 years is a long time for you to be in the industry. Lots, lots of changes within the industry, but not a lot of changes in, in regards to having that many, that many more women in the industry. So there's still, we have that issue, but obviously there's been more, there's been some changes, like you said, around having some men support, they want more women and they, they, they realize there's a problem and we need to have women supporting women. But can you think of a time where you were just like at your wits end, where you almost quit, you wanted to give up and, and you didn't have the confidence? Yeah, there was certainly in the first, you know, when someone's coming into this industry, the first two years are really the most difficult. Then after you're still in about five years, um, it, took me, it took me close to 10 years to say, I'm, I'm going to stay. And the reasons why I didn't leave before, it's like I would have to start all over again in a different profession. And I just didn't, I just didn't want to do that. But there were several times where I just felt like I, I can't do this anymore, but really made the difference is the other two women that I just mentioned that we would meet regularly. And literally, there were times we would all cry together at the same time. Um, and uh, of the other two, one left the industry and she started her own business doing something completely different. The other one is still in the industry um, and we're still good friends. So having, you know, some, some folks um, that are going to be good friends that will support you, having a mentor and having advocates makes a big difference. And having coaches like you, Robin, <laughs> is, makes a big difference um, too. And I've had coaches and consultants too, which was another means of providing me with a level of confidence that, yeah, you're doing the right thing, Renee, or no, you might want to consider doing it this way or that way. So building out your support team, I think is really important. Yeah. And I think that's such an incredible point because so many people are kind of thinking it, thinking of it as their own business. Like when I started, I was like, okay, I'm building my own business, which was exciting. And I was, I was very, um, just motivated to do that because I felt like this is black and white. Like I can actually like create success if I do what they tell me to do. And if they tell me to do what they say, and I follow the instructions. Like I have like the, I have no ceiling. I can make as much money as I want. And I was willing to do that. And I was motivated. And I was thinking like, I can do this. I can do this. And even though I had support, you know, at my company, I definitely felt like it was my path, my book, my, you know, growing this. And it's interesting because I was single in my thirties for 10 years. So, or, or actually I guess it was my twenties. I met my husband, I think when I was 33 or something like that. But I, I remember I was alone for so long I, I personally, not even as far as business goes, um, that I was constantly creating my own financial future and my own path. And I think that's kind of how I saw the world is very much like, this is how I create it as opposed to we, and my husband is very much a team player, very much a we person. And so he's very much, we, 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 and I'm very much, <laughs> I, 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 not in a selfish way, but that I think in some ways that's my personality that I feel like I needed to achieve. And then even so, like my, when I was a financial advisor, I kind of jumped in and out. I, I had like an outside business activity helping business owners as well. And I was working with my husband and still like, then when we were working together, it's kind of like, I felt like I had to have ownership of my own stuff, you know? So I think there's a part of us that wants to do it ourselves. Like, I don't know if that's my upbringing or just women in general that want to have ownership, 
But what you're talking about with these two other women and having a really a community, even that, that small community, but having the support, I think is everything. And now, I mean, with, you know, of course, I have my femme mentorship and my, my programs where I have women together, that the togetherness of having them and supporting each other that are going through the same things to be able to cry together and to be able to celebrate how much money you make. Like yeah. you don't get to celebrate that with normal friends. Like, Hey, I just made $10,000. Like it doesn't right. work that way. But to be able to tell your friends who is, who also are business owners in the industry and actually celebrate a win. That's yeah. amazing. So, and I know, yeah. tell them a little bit about your wham group because that's really awesome. And you have, you yeah. Know, yeah. Um, so wham stands for women advisor mastermind. And so I co-founded it along with another woman financial advisor. Um, We started, I want to say, about, it's probably been nine years ago. We were at a um, a woman's conference, and several of us were sitting together at the same table, and we found out that we, you know, our office, that we were located pretty close to each other, um, and we really enjoyed the conference and said, we should meet more frequently. Let's let's set up a, a group. And so um, here in the Los Angeles area, it can be a real pain in the butt because driving around, even if it's just 10 miles, it can take you an hour to get someplace. Mm-hmm. And so we were rotating around going to different places. But the bottom line is we were meeting on a monthly basis. Um, we did change our, our platform so that we would just meet in one place instead of circulating around. And what we did was share what our experiences were in our businesses and our practices. And, you know, who was doing what and here's a problem I'm having. Can y'all have an idea to share with us? Um, And we started out with, there was um, six of us. Then it went to 12, went to 10. Then it went to 12. And um, I think we're up to, we're a little over 12 now, but we said, you know, we got to kind of keep it, um, keep that size group because it will be a little bit complex just in terms of being able to be introduced to other people. Right. But we've been doing this on a monthly basis. The only times we don't meet are in um, August because that's usually the last time that, you know, people are on vacation. And in December, we have a, a get together. This year has been a little bit of a challenge. We've been doing all virtual meetings. Right. But um, it's a great way to support each other to confirm, yes, you're doing the right thing, or you might want to consider doing this. So we cover different topics, marketing, investments. Um, We also uh, research and also just um, operationally, you know, how are you running your business? And so we will have these different themes that we can share with each other. And it's it's made a big difference, um, especially this year, because the majority of us have not been negatively impacted because people do need financial advice. They need planning. Um, And so that's been um, important for us this year though, too, to share, how are you running your practice now? How are you running your business in this new environment? And we've got some great ideas that they share with us about how they're doing. We'll have to bring that back for another podcast. Um, (laughs) That sounds awesome. So going back to just how to, the how to, because if I'm, if I, I mean, there's some listeners, of course, who've been in a long time getting, getting a mentor, getting an advocate, hiring a coach that might be very easy for them. And then sometimes I know, especially like you said, in the male dominated industry, getting their, some, some people are in small firms where there's not a lot of that access. And then there are also some people who maybe they, they don't have the right person or they say, oh, I don't have the money, you know, so I can't actually invest in a coach, that sort of thing. So are there other strategies? And I still would say find the money, of course. But as far as like the how to actually get confidence and create confidence, I would say create is a better word because you can make it happen mm-hmm. um, so that you can be more successful what other little tools do you got up your sleeve that has helped you even, I don't know if there's any, do, do any mantras or like, is there anything else that you do just to help get you that confidence when you might not have it? Yeah. Um, those have really been the key ones actually, frankly. And um, what has really made the difference for me because I was still kind of struggling a little bit with this when I first started uh, the business. Um, but I one day made a statement about um, a company that was going public and um, it ended up 
uh, out on the social media. And that's how I got hired by CNBC to start coming on and doing that. That helped a lot to say, oh, I'm a lot smarter than what I thought I was with a lot of the questions that were asked because it was always about the markets. Um, and, you know, what are your thoughts about the markets? And that was my submission. Although I really, really wanted to focus more on financial planning. But in any event, that actually helped to build up my confidence level because I was still struggling with it. Um, so and specifically, anyway, is, it, is it something like hair out, like help a reporter out? Or you submitted something to get on on media? Or? Actually, there was someone that reached out to me, and, and there are some a, a number of uh, platforms where people can do that, and then the media will reach out to you oftentimes afterwards. Um, but it was, uh, and it was so funny. Someone posted it. It was on, um, I think it was a Wall Street Journal, on the li- online version. And then I got this email from CNBC saying, we'd like to interview you. And I thought it was, I thought it was a scam, so I didn't, I didn't reply <laughs> um, until then they actually called me, and I was like, wow. So we're at a stage right now, even though that was, um, that was seven years ago, because we've been here eight years. The seven years was the year after I went um, and started my business. Um, that really helped to put a lot of confidence back in, back in my head, because I was not able to take all of my clients with me when I left. Although a year after I left, I'd say 80% of the clients came with me when I started my, started my business. The other 20% stayed, but then they realized, and this is something ladies that you need to know that it is in our DNA that we really care about our clients. It's just not, what money they have, what they don't have, and how much we're investing with them. The majority, the other 20% came over about a year later and said, we are so, you know, we wanted to come back because the advisor that was given to us, they don't care about us. They don't ask me how my day is or my family or what my health is, or they just want to handle my money. And it, that actually really raised the bar. For us as women right now, this is an excellent time for you to be able to step in there and if somebody pushes back and says, because men will tell you, oh, you need to do business this way. No, let's, you know, if I'm going to be working with women, we do things a little bit differently. We don't, you know, we're not focused on how much money you have in managing your money. It's managing your financial life. Um, and we as women, we're very good at getting that and understanding that and sharing that. That's awesome. The gift of gab is truly a gift, right? Yes, <laughs> it is. It, it really is. It is. And I think that's that's huge. Um, yeah, I I think in general, like we underestimate ourselves and our abilities, like as women, like we have, we are, we. It's almost like inherently we have this lack of confidence. And I don't say that to be mean, but I I say it because we have this we're striving for per- perfection. We want to be the best. We want to make sure people are happy and they like us. And not just for the sake of us being liked, but for the sake of pleasing and, and making sure that people are taken care of. And what I think Renee is so huge that you just said is that we can use that to our advantage and to serve clients at a higher level. But with that, it's also, as you said, is, is what I heard, and you didn't say these words exactly, but you got to take some risks to put yourself out there. So however that came about where someone asked a question and you decided, hey, I'm going to answer this question and I have an opinion and I have a belief and I'm going to answer it the way I think that I should answer it, the way I believe and the way I feel that is right. And it's congruent with who I am, which I think that also has a lot to do with some sort of personal branding, which is like often lost if you're at a wirehouse or if you're at a, a company that has a strong, a strong brand. It's like you are are the brand. And if you can just say like, I have an opinion, I have a belief, I have, you know, something that, that I got to say and share that then opportunities come to you. And that's exactly what happened. And this happened and then seeing, what was it? CNBC was calling you. And then then now you've got all these accolades because of it. And it's like, it's just this, um, uh, this snowball effect of you, the first thing of you taking a little bit of risk and speaking out your truth and being, yeah. and, And being who you are and it's okay. You know, I think the whole idea uh, of the interpretation of what success is, 
is just one way, the way that men have built this industry. And, you know, I can't be upset with them. They did build it. They created these environments. But now there has to be a recognition that just because it was successful here, it's got to expand out and it can be successful over here, too. Because, as you know, as women, we, we're, we're going to take a different approach. And that was a big pushback with, uh, with not only me, but other women at firms. It still is happening because there's an expectation that you have to raise a certain amount of assets within a period of time, or they want you to have that client within a month. And, you know, a lot of times, if you're working with other women, it takes us a little bit of time to decide, yeah, I want to work with you. But then when we start working with you, we don't leave. I, the average time that I have my clients, I had some clients that are still with me for over 30 years. They're still with me and their adult kids um, and their grandkids. So, you know, having a, having a perspective of really being engaged in someone's personal life really makes a big difference. And the average time that clients have been with me has been about 15 years easily. Yeah. So, and it's such a beautiful business. I always talk to my clients about this. I'm like, you're so lucky you have this recurring revenue model. Like your clients will never leave because you are so amazing at what you do and you care so much. So once you get the client, I mean, the t- this is why it's easy for me to justify my fee because they get such a great ROI because they get one client that's like pays for decades and decades and decades. But for you as a business owner to be able to do that where you get a client that stays just because you're great at what you do and um, that you care so much. So um, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Uh, thank you. Place to find you. Absolutely. Thank you. What's the way to find you on social media or, or your website? What's the best way to find you? Um, well, yeah, we're on LinkedIn and, uh, we actually have a group called Smart Women Savvy Money, um, on a Facebook page. It's a a group, um, and, you know, on our website, Urban WM, and the reason why I call it Urban Wealth Management, because I get asked that often, is that's where the majority of professional women live, work, and where they are building out their wealth is in major urban areas. So our urban uh, WM site has a lot of content, blogs, um, videos, and all that good stuff. So be able to see what we're up to. Thank you so much. I want to give a gift as well as thinking about a lot having to do with confidence is so much of mindset. And what you gave a lot of strategies is really having the right people around you and having the community. and, And also, like we just talked about, just like you know, speaking your truth and having a voice. But some of that, I think you can, you can start to, I like to say, borrow the belief, like, like, cause sometimes we have these limiting beliefs where it's, I mean, not sometimes we all have limiting beliefs that are holding us back that prevent us from taking action and the action, even getting a mentor, getting a coach, like that action is sometimes we don't take it because we're by some sort of limiting belief. Um, So I have this thing called the belief loan phenomenon, which is essentially that you can borrow the belief from a mentor, from a coach, you know, you borrow the belief even from watching a video. And then as long as you know what action to take or whatever strategy it is you're going to put into place, you can start getting the results and then adopt the belief. And so I have a video and I was just writing to, I think if you go to, and I'll give this to the the listeners here, femalefinancialadvisors.com with the ORS advisors.com forward slash mindset. You can watch that video about how to borrow the belief. So um, you can get started there as well. So thank you again to Renee. All right. Of course, of course, I will not. Of course. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Next time. uh, Bye. The Woman's Way podcast. Bye.